Born in 1861, Georges Méliès was the son of a well-to-do family who owned a shoe factory. After finishing his studies, he was sent to London to improve his English, and it was there he developed his lifelong passion, stage magic. So much so that a few years later, he sold his shares in the family business and bought a theater in Paris. Milliers was at the first public cinema screening, held by Lumiere Brothers on December 28, 1895, and immediately offered to buy one of the siblings' cameras. They declined, so he returned to England, bought a film projector, and with a few modifications, turned it into a camera. Eventually, Milliers built his own studio, entirely made of glass like a greenhouse to allow light needed for filming. And it was there he made his films, which he would later screen in his theater. His productions, which often incorporated stage magic, were mostly fantasy tales, set within impressively imaginative sets, which Méliès designed and built. He also pioneered cinema techniques like double exposure, which combines two separate images into a single image, as well as the jump cut, a now common editing technique that allows for an abrupt transition between moments. His films were a success with audiences around the globe. It's reported that filmmakers like Thomas Edison bootlegged his films and made money off these illegal copies. During the First World War, Milliez's studio was turned into a hospital, and his movies were among its casualties. Hundreds of his films were melted by the army, because at the time, the silver found in celluloid film was used to produce the heels of military boots. In the end, Méliès became bankrupt and made a living managing a toy and candy shop in the Montparnasse railway station. But in the late 1920s, thanks to film journalists who were interested in his innovations and unique style, Méliès was rediscovered and later awarded the Legion of Honor by his country. It is estimated that before passing away in 1938, Milliers made more than 500 films. The Lumiere brothers called him the creator of the cinematic spectacle. Walt Disney also paid him tribute, saying he was one of the pioneers who discovered the means of placing poetry within the reach of the common man. Georges Méliès's surviving films are still an amazing feat to behold. And within these cinematic delights, one can see the birth of the foundations of the blockbusting fantasy epics of today. For more on this, let's welcome film historian Ian Christie. Hi Ian, good to have you on Showcase with us today. So, um, we keep saying that Georges Méliès is one of the creators of filmmaking, of cinema as we know it today. But then uh, there are some other names uh, who are given the same title as well. So tell us uh, what is his uh, role exactly in, in the history of filmmaking? Well, uh, Georges Méliès was one of the very first people who turned up to see the Lumiere brothers show their cinematograph uh, on the 28th of December 1895. And uh, he said immediately, I want to buy one, <laughs> because he was a magician. And he felt that he could uh, use this new device to make magic on the, in his theater. Uh, they wouldn't sell to him. 
And so um, he went to London and actually he bought his first equipment from Robert Paul, the English pioneer and, in a way, the rival of the Lumiere brothers. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think his role in the history of filmmaking is recognized enough or would you maybe call him a bit underrated compared to Lumiere brothers, for example? Oh, I would definitely call him underrated compared with the Lumieres. The Lumieres, <laughs> I think, get way too much credit. Uh, yes, their cinematograph was a real breakthrough, but, you know, it, they didn't really make very interesting films. Um, they produced these little scenes of everyday life, but Melies' vision of what cinema could be was way beyond that, and he was the first to really make the cinema, as we know it today, full of fantasy, uh, he made uh, historical reconstructions of the, the Dreyfus affair, which was a big scandal in France. But above all, he made fantasy. And if we think that cinema today is very much about creating magical, fantastic worlds, then Méliès is the father of cinema. Interesting. Why do you think he is underrated then? Most of his films were lost. That was the first problem. Uh, it's a real problem with early cinema right across the world. Um, most of the films, they just weren't considered important, and they all kind of disappeared. And I remember back in the last century, very, very few of Melies' films were even known. Now we're discovering more and more and more of them, and we're getting a much better kind of understanding of it. And then, of course, there was Martin Scorsese, who made his great film, Hugo, which is really all about Melies. And I think that film is, is the best way to introduce Melies and his importance you know, to, to a large audience today. So, Ian, you say that uh, most of his films are lost, but do, do you know about how much of it do we have, uh, we have access to today? Oh, we have uh, access to a lot more than we did have because they keep being rediscovered. I mean, the great thing is that when people realized just how, how fantastic Méliès was, they started looking. And the films keep turning up. And what we see in his films, uh, you know, the ones that we have access to, are all fairy tales of the previous centuries. I wonder why you think that is. Well, Méliès was, a, you know, a man of the theatre. Um, he'd grown up um, with the magic theatre, which was a big thing in the 19th century. And he was used to doing illusions, fantastic illusions, which involved dressing up in costume. So the fairy tales, Cinderella... Uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, stories like Faust, these were all you know, part of his world. So when he started making films, that's naturally what he made films about. And um, it's funny because we're watching a completely new medium take shape, the cinema, but what we're seeing are stories from the past. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of paradox. Yeah, it is a paradox. And uh, speaking of the technicality of his, of his uh, movies, why don't you tell us about uh, the special effects that he used? And um, I mean, you know, that is the novelty, I guess, in his story. Well, really, he was the inventor of many of the special effects, which are still used in filmmaking today, uh, even if they're done electronically today. Very simple idea. You run the camera, you stop it, you change something, and then you start it again. Uh, that it's magic. Something disappears. Um, and then it, the picture keeps changing, as if by magic. Méliès was one of the first people to do that. The other great uh, device that he exploited a lot was superimposing one picture over another. So he would film a scene, he would wind the film back, and then he would film another scene on top of it, wind it back, and he would do that maybe six or seven times. Incredible precision needed to make it work. But when it works, it really is magic. And are these techniques um, sort of the ones that we're using today, or is that a bit too much to say? No, no, they, they are. <laughs> it's just, when you see you know, a superhero film today, what you're seeing is a number of different images layered on top of one another. And that's done digitally, electronically today. But essentially, it's the same technique that Méliès was using right back at the beginning of the last century. Uh, it's, it's the basis of all film magic. Um, stopping the camera, starting it again, and superimposing layer after layer on top of a picture. It's, it's really what makes the difference between you know, simple photography and film magic, film fantasy. Mm -hmm. And as a film historian, Ian, please talk us through who, which important filmmakers he inspired the most. Well, you know, I think he inspired uh, filmmakers all over the world. 
because his films were tremendously popular. In the first years of the, of the 20th century, his films were really highly valued. They were expensive, more expensive than other films to buy, and everybody saw them. So he created a whole genre of film fantasy. In England, uh, he certainly had a big influence on Robert Paul, who was the founder of British cinema. I've just written a book about him. Um, and they had a very close kind of, I think, rivalry. <laughs> I think they were trying to egg each other on. You know, if I do this, can you do one better? Uh, Segundo de Chaumont, a great Spanish-born filmmaker who became one of the absolute pioneers of special effects in slightly later cinema, he took inspiration from Méliès as well. And Stuart Blackton, who was the pioneer of animation in America, he was also inspired by Méliès. All right, Ian, uh, very quickly before we wrap up, obviously Trip to the Moon is very famous, but then what other movies can you uh, recommend us to watch, actually? I mean, I've never watched uh, uh, his movies, so what is a good start? <laughs> well, um, Journey Across the Impossible is a fantastic film that, that goes just as far and even further than Trip to the Moon. Um, I think uh, The One Man Band is an extraordinary film. It's, it's really a film in which he himself, Georges Méliès, plays seven different parts. So what you see in One Man Band is seven little images of Méliès all playing a musical instrument. <laughs> and that's an example of what he could do just by you know, rewinding the film. And oh. the other thing, of course, a great film is Conquest of the Pole, which is one of his later films. That's, that's a fantastic piece of work. All right. All noted. Thanks a lot, Ian, for joining us on Showcase today. Lovely to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you.